Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OCHEM video. The topic today is going to be worked examples of epoxide reactions. In the previous video, we talked about uh, epoxide reactions in detail. Uh, we mentioned two mechanisms that they can undergo, two general categories, nucleophilic ring opening and acid catalyzed ring opening. So this video is just going to be dedicated to pure problem solving, so I encourage you to pause the video. Uh, I'm going to dive straight into the problems uh, and check your solutions uh, when you're done. Here we go. So right off the bat, we see an epoxide, we see some stereochemistry, and we see an acid. So first thing we think to ourselves is acid catalyzed ring opening, and we're going to see how that works. Okay, so we have some uh, sulfuric acid right here. Let's draw that out real quick. Now, first thing that happens in acid catalyzed ring opening, the oxygen of the epoxide, right, is going to deprotonate or become protonated, excuse me, by the acid. That's uh, double arrows because acid-based chemistry. So we end up with a protonated epoxide, right? Now it's going to get a plus one formal charge because it's oxygen with three bonds. Now, where is the nucleophile, which is water in this case, where is it going to attack? It's going to attack at the more substituted carbon, right? That's the rule. More substituted carbon is here, right? This one is monosubstituted, right? It only has one carbon attached. This is disubstituted. It has an ethyl group and it has a CH2 attached. So the H2O nucleophile is going to attack right here. Let's draw that. Right, we have our water. It's going to come in, attack this carbon right here, open that epoxide ring, and we can go uh, to the next step. We're not done yet. Remember inversion of stereochemistry, right? So let's have that inverted. What's left to do, we have oxygen with three bonds again, right? And this time it's because of this water. So we have to deprotonate the water using another water molecule nearby. So let's do that real quick. Grab one of those hydrogens, send that over to oxygen, and we can write our final product. Okay, so our final product looks like that. We made a diol, right, two alcohols. Uh, so let's move on to the next problem. All right, so here we have another epoxide, which is some stereochem. OME, right, methoxide, that's a very strong nucleophile. A polar aprotic solvent, so what should be screaming at you is nucleophilic ring opening, and that's exactly what happens. So we have to look for the least substituted carbon in this case. But notice that these carbons are equally substituted, which means it doesn't matter which one we attack. So let's have OME attack this carbon right here. Open up the epoxide. All right, so now we're here. Notice a couple things. First of all, the oxygen now has a minus formal charge. We have to protonate that in the next step. Uh, also notice that the epoxide was opened and that at the attack site, stereochem was inverted. But I want to make a really, really important point. It won't always be the case that inversion of stereochem means wedge becomes dash or dash becomes wedge. That's a general rule and it works in most cases and you have to re really be careful. So what you really have to make sure is that S became R or R became S. That's what you really have to do. That's the surefire way to know that you inverted stereochem uh, successfully. For now, just know that yes, uh, wedge became dash in this case. Uh, so now last step is protonate that oxygen. So for that, we use workup, right? Water. It's going to deprotonate that water, and now we have our final product. All right, so we have an alcohol here, an OME over here. We're good. All right, so here we see uh, another epoxide, some stereochem, but now notice that we have a really, and again, sorry, a really strong nucleophile. This is a Grignard reagent, right? Uh, if you watched the video on epoxides, I actually did, did the same example there, but I'm going to do it again just because it's really important to know how Grignard reagents can interact with epoxides. So nucleophilic ring opening, because this is a strong nucleophile, we look for the less substituted carbon, that guy right there. So let's attack it. Attack the carbon right there, open the epoxide ring, remember stereochemistry. All right, so notice a couple things. The Grignard reagent attacked at the less substituted carbon, inversion of stereochemistry. Now we're left with uh, an oxygen with a minus one charge. No inversion of stereochemistry here because this wasn't the attacked carbon. Next we use workup uh, to protonate that oxygen, right? Make it happy. And now we can go to the product. 
All right, so this is what our answer looks like. We have an alcohol and we have an inverted chem stereochem at the attached site with our Grignard uh, carbon compound uh, attached, right? We created a new carbon-carbon bond. All right, so for this next problem, we see an epoxide, we see some acid, right? Sulfuric acid and a weak nucleophile. So what should be uh, <laughs> blinking is um, acid catalyzed ring opening. And that's exactly what happened. Look for the more substituted carbon, but before we do that, we need to protonate the oxygen. That's what happens first in any acid catalyzed ring opening. So oxygen is going to grab that acidic hydrogen right there, send those electrons over to oxygen, and now we're here. All right, so now we have a protonated epoxide with a plus one formal charge. So what's going to happen is this, this plus one formal charge makes this carbon very, very susceptible to nucleophilic attack. It is the more substituted carbon. So ethanol, right, ETOH, will attack the more substituted carbon. Let's draw ethanol. Going to attack right here. Send those electrons over to oxygen. Hope that's clear. It's attacking this carbon right here, the carbon that's bonded to the methyl and the oxygen. It's this carbon. Okay. All right, so that gets us over here. Notice that we formed an alcohol, but now uh, after inverting the stereochem at the attack site, right? Notice that oxygen has three bonds and it doesn't like to have three bonds, so it has a plus one formal charge. We're gonna have to deprotonate that using another nearby ethanol molecule. Ethanol will grab that hydrogen, send those electrons over to oxygen, and we can write our final answer. All right, so this is what it looks like. Hope that wasn't too bad. All right, so let's move on to the next problem. You'll notice something a little different here. I'm giving you the product and I want you to tell me the reactant. Now there are many, many different ways to make this. So to make the problem more concise, we're gonna say, I want you to form this from an epoxide and using two reagents in a single, uh, single mechanism, right? You can't use like this, then this, then this. One mechanism like acid catalyzed or nucleophilic ring opening, that's for you to, to decide. Pause the video, I'm gonna go straight into solving this. So when you're determining which oxygen used to be the epoxide oxygen, it's the alcohol oxygen. So this OME must have been added at some point, okay? So we're starting to get a picture of what the reactant might have been. So the epoxide was this one right here. We noticed that we added an OME to a certain carbon. Now we didn't add it to this carbon, which is less substituted. We added the OME to this carbon, which is more substituted. That should trigger in your mind, we did some sort of acid catalyzed reaction, right? Because it attacked the more substituted carbon. Also notice some stereochemistry. We have a dashed methyl over here. So we're gonna wanna invert that in our mind, try making it a wedge, see if, if R became S or S became R. Uh, and I think that's enough information to get going. Sulfuric acid, that's always a good place to start. So let's write that in. All right, and now, we know that we attached an OME to the more substituted carbon in an acid catalyzed reaction. So what would our reagent be? Would it be OME? Would it be methoxide? No, right? That's a really strong nucleophile. That would do nucleophilic ring opening. That would attack this carbon. So we want OME in the form of a weak nucleophile. What is that? That's methoxide, not methoxide, that's methanol. Okay, so CH3OH. So now we have our reagents down. Now let's see if we could form what the reactant looked like, okay? So we wanna say, let's say this is carbon one and carbon two. We know that carbon one and two formed the two carbons in the epoxide ring, and this was the epoxide oxygen minus the hydrogen, because we know that this came from protonation. So that's, that's a lot of info. So, so far we have this, right? So far we have our epoxide. Sorry, I drew it upside down, I don't know why. Um, but that's an epoxide right there. Uh, and now we know that we added uh, an OME to a carbon that had a methyl group on it. Now, the methyl group is dashed here, so it's not okay to assume that it's wedged there. We're gonna check that wedge really did become dashed because that's not always the case. R will always become S, S will always become R upon inversion, but dash becoming wedge, that's not professional and won't always work. So here I drew a wedge methyl. Let's see the configuration of this. Draw in our hydrogen. This would be one, two, third, fourth priority going clockwise, right? So that would be R. 
And just to verify, let's make sure this is S. So yes, this is S. And if you don't know how to determine R or S, I suggest uh, watching a video on it. I might make a video later, but for now, uh, I'm assuming you know it. So R did become S, so we are correct to say that the methyl is wedged. So I think we're good, right? This will absolutely become this, uh, given these reagents. So that was kind of a tough problem, uh, but that could, that could definitely appear on the test. This is retrosynthesis, uh, kind of like a mini retrosynthesis problem. So I hope that wasn't too bad. All right, so we're gonna do another synthesis, retrosynthesis problem. Uh, this will be the last problem of the video. So notice we have, again, an alcohol over here. We can assume that that used to be the epoxide. And we have a CN over here, right? So which carbon is the CN attached to? It's attached to the less substituted carbon. So working backwards, we can think nucleophilic ring opening, right? Because whatever nucleophile we had, most likely CN minus, right? Because it's a swell nucleophile. It attacked the less substituted carbon. So it's safe to say that we're dealing with nucleophilic ring opening territory. So in that case, let's choose a polar acrotic solvent like DMF, okay? And now what else can we say based on this? We know that our nucleophile was most likely CN minus, so let's just give that a spectator ion and say NaCN, right? Just to be professional, NaCN, Na is plus charge, CN is minus charge. So now using this, uh, this is what we have so far, let's try to work backwards and see what our reactant would have looked like. We won't have this hydrogen, right? Because that comes later. That's when uh, the oxygen grabs water from, sorry, grabs the hydrogen from water during workup. So we won't have the hydrogen. Will we have this methyl? Yes, we will. And will it be inverted? No, it won't. And it won't be inverted because it's not on the attacked carbon, right? So let's see if we could draw our product, we, our reactant. We know we have an epoxide, so let's draw that, okay? And now we have uh, a methyl that's dashed. Let's put it here. And we're good, right? This, given these conditions, will become this. And just for fun, we could draw the mechanism just to be sure. We'd have CN minus flowing around in solution. We'd have that attack the less substituted carbon, which is right here. Open up that epoxide ring and form, right, this minus the hydrogen. I'll write it out. And then that would get protonated with water and give us our answer. Okay, so I hope that wasn't too bad. That's another retrosynthesis problem. Epoxide reactions typically aren't too bad, uh, not too tricky. So hope this video was really helpful.